Hello and welcome back to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Spanj and today I've got a bit of a showcase for you. This is the Anvil. This is a hover vessel that I built during a Twitch live stream. Now I had to take it off camera to do a bunch of testing, texturing, painting and all sorts and this is the finished product. It's changed slightly from what it looked like on Twitch. Uh, I had to do a lot of work on this side in order to get these turrets to actually fire the guns because I had these RT turrets were retractable and they were also embedded deeper into these alcoves um, they refused to fire the plasmas were the only ones that actually seemed to fire reliably these rockets again were slightly deeper into the alcoves uh, and um, they wouldn't fire either so I know a lot of these turrets have very limited firing arcs but that is by design this thing is a broadside menace so anything from this sort of distance is gonna get hurt by this thing so it's a long range artillery platform you've probably already noticed it's got a four artillery guns which is three more than you're allowed <laughs> so yeah there's that this, uh, this hover vessel is actually going to form a premium blueprint over on Shattered Realm. It's going to be available in the workshop as well, but if you want to bring it in on the server, you're going to have to pay for it with in-game gold ingots, which you can mine out of the ground or trade with other players for, and or even just steal from someone else. The Anvil is designed as a artillery platform it's not particularly good at running and gunning it's not particularly good at brawling it can take a reasonable beating but i wouldn't just leave it in front of a, a a load of turrets or angry players or anything for any extended period of time it's supposed to slowly approach a target and use its superior artillery firepower to whittle down a target from a distance and if things do get a bit closer then the plasmas and rockets will open up as well which gives something uh, or gives the target a little bit more of staying power uh, you might want to try and rush the anvil uh, but if it's at a distance and it's side on to you you're gonna probably get hurt quite a lot in the process however it is probably still the best tactic getting behind this thing or around the other side of it is the best way to deal with it it's not fast enough or doesn't turn well enough to really keep up with a fast small light tank therefore this thing's probably best escorted by more traditional brawler vehicles while this thing stays at a distance and picks off its targets it's capable of taking down an SV with its rocket turrets but again only from that side and to be honest the armor on the top is not brilliant so trying to stay away from SVs as you can see it's a fairly interesting looking design it's asymmetrical because its broadside is on one side it's got a reasonable forward thrust power but its side and reverse again is sluggish and it has a couple of Gatling cannons for point defense on the front and on the side to get into the anvil you have to get on top of it there's a hatch. This is a manual hatch, it's not activated by any signal logic. You have to use the F key to get inside. But once you are inside, it's a pretty nice spacious space. We have healing units and uh, even a clone chamber for respawning in. There's an access ramp to get back up to the access hatch above you. And there's a doorway into the cockpit, which you know has two cockpits for aesthetics more than anything, a fridge, and that's about it. Four passenger seats exist in the back here, uh, which are supposed to indicate kind of weapons control. If you have four friends to man, manning all four artillery guns is highly recommended because the uh, AI is, is, is kind of crap, as you know. And in here, we have some ammunition boxes stashed away away from the side that's going to be receiving a lot of the hate. And down here we have our engineering section. Fuel tanks, generators, RCSs are spaced out to prevent any chain reactions as best they can. And generators are stashed at the back, as you can see. 
We have some constructors and some work area, some armor lockers and an O2 station, as well as some O2 tanks and a ventilator. So we've got all the mod cons that we need, but it's not a long term tank. It's certainly not a mobile base and it's definitely, like I said, not a brawler. But let's see how she does in the battlefield, shall we? Because that's what we're all here to see. So I've loaded the anvil into a single player game. This is the planet Brigantia on Shattered Realm. I've manually loaded all the weapons. Well, actually I've manually loaded the artillery guns because they're the ones that take about three hours to reload. And I've set the turreting priorities to only shoot other turrets for now. I've got a couple of targets in mind. They're up north. We've got a comm center, some drones, um, fortress, and a large comm center. What is that? I can't even get out of the way. Anyway, it's, it's a POI. Uh, we're going to head up there. And um, there we can see our point defense kicking into action <laughs> and defending us from some angry Xerox that snuck up on us, which is nice. All my turrets are configured like this for now. With the artillery guns being four of them, I might add the generators later on. But before we set off, I just want to double check the range of my artillery. And we can see that in the bottom right corner there. 371 meters. Happy now? Right. I think they're dead, Steve. Jesus. Okay. We're going to head over to the comm center, but we're going to try and stay about 371 meters away from it. Like I said before, this isn't a brawling machine. It's something we need to get at distance and hit them from afar. Now, the problem we might have here is the terrain. And also these indestructible trees, which is slightly irritating. We need to get the left side on to bear on this comm center here. We also need a clear line of sight to hit it shoot its turrets off. It actually seems to be right in a valley which is <laughs> which is typical isn't it? <laughs> you want to snipe a POI and it's going to force you to go straight up straight up to it isn't it? I think that's what we're going to have to do with that one. It's right in a valley. I mean what are the odds? Okay well in that case we are going to see this thing's brawling power in that case. Man, there are a lot of Xerox around here. I'm just going to charge straight in. We're going to take a bit of fire here. I'm hoping the turrets can wake up nice and quick to deal with this ion cannon turret. There we go. You kind of have to hit everything side on in this thing, which is slightly weird. There's another turret there, boys. Thank you very much, artillery. Very well executed. That drone base over there might be a nice easier target. It's on top of a hill. I'm going to park the tank here for a second. Let's see if those arty turrets can deal with that over there. I need uh, my miniguns to take care of that drone. Rockets have done it instead. We are taking fire from that drone base at 400 meters. Artillery guns seem to be slightly confused by everything else that's going on. This is the problem sometimes uh, against PVE targets. Is there's so many targets that the artillery just sits there completely and utterly dumbfounded about what to do with it. Let's try a different approach. Let's go down to the east here. Sweep around that POI just down there. Because it's flatter ground we might be able to get the drop on those turrets. These Xerax spawns are really not helping. Still, we've got the close range turrets to keep us safe from them so Maybe it's okay. Let's slowly creep towards that POI. Oh, hold there. That might arty turrets that they had a range of 371 meters. Yes, 371. But just as a crazy experiment, let's shoot that. Yeah, we're out of range. Let's move a bit closer then. Now those laser turrets seem to have a very long range, about 500 meters I think, but the ion cannons are a bit shorter. And there we go, artillery is starting to open up now, which is good. Can you get rid of that overseer? Yeah. Just takes a bit of coaxing, you know. 
The problem with the artillery is the, um, the turret AI is just terrible. Come on, artillery, shoot something. I am out of their range. It's getting closer then. So much for sniping. Come on, shoot. Shoot, damn it, man, shoot. Seriously. The artillery just seems to be completely and utterly uh, disabled right now. Oh, look. I oh, it's too late. Never mind. Just shoot that. Shoot something, at least, you know. Make it worthwhile that you came here. So, uh... Yeah. <laughs> it's a very strange um, and odd bug, I think, in the game, where if you're in the pilot seat, like I am right now, and you've got lots of turrets trying to shoot something, like these guys are. Get out of the cockpit. They suddenly all start shooting again. It's very strange. <laughs> but if you ever find that your turrets are just sat there like complete and utter idiots not doing anything, just get out of the cockpit and <laughs> they might open up a bit. Because right now I've only got two turrets firing and they're all set to the same target. More like it, come on. This is the whole theory behind this thing, was basically you just drive it in circles around POIs. And watch the turrets t take them apart. If the turrets were smart enough to do it, of course. And this drone base is surrounded in drones and Xerax. So we're probably going to take quite a bit of sh damage here. Although it is nice to actually see that the turrets are opening up for once. Dealing with those turrets. My point defense miniguns are trying to defend me from the Xerox and monsters that are coming in. And the artillery is finally woken up. Uh, it does seem that, that, yeah, like I said, it does seem that if they get stuck, you just need to get out of the cockpit and then it, should, it sort, of, sort of resets them into place for some reason. So it's, it's really strange. We've lost a turret. We've lost the rocket turret on the front. And I think that is largely just down to the turrets getting stuck for a while and not doing anything. So, Elion, please fix. But that is the anvil. Like I said at the beginning, it's not really something you want to leave on its own. But the power of those four artillery cannons can be very useful in a support role didn't really design it to take on POIs, mainly because of the Xerox problem. But if you are attacking a enemy base of another faction, the extra firepower could be useful. But like I said, you don't want to be tanking with this thing. It's a support role. And it can take the hits. But you don't want it to. Anyway. There was something else that uh, that happened while I was testing this thing. A patrol ship decided to have a go. And it actually turns out to be pretty good against CVs. <laughs> have a look. This patrol vessel thinks that he's got the drop on me. Down on a completely different planet while I was still testing and tweaking this thing. But the artillery guns seem to favour shooting up quite nicely. Keep the anvil moving. Try not to give a stationary target to this thing as it rains down all that ion fire. Now the plasmas have opened up along with the missile launchers and the four RTs. We're going to poke some rather big holes into the side of this thing. Hmm. 
And we're keeping the anvil completely parallel to this CV. We've got a full broadside opening up on there. Trying to get a bit closer. Trying to take out that bottom turret. And there it goes. Keep that broadside facing. Get those artillery guns to work. You can see the hole that we've made in the side of this ship now. I'm going to switch the artillery guns to deal with generators now. Well, all of the turrets to deal with generators. Let me see if we can knock this thing out for good. Again, keep that broadside onto the target. Don't let it get around you. Not that it's got any guns left. But let's assume, for example, that it did. We need to keep it on the side where our guns can shoot it first. And there goes a the generator. Looks like our turrets have locked onto something else. At this stage, this patrol vessel is dead. And it knows it is. It can't escape. It's got no guns to return fire. And this broadside is just dismantling it piece by piece. You can really tell when those four RTs land a hit. It's just blocks start dissolving around where they, <laughs> they hit the hull. And there goes the second generator. And that's it. It's dead. Anvil 1, Patrol CV, none. Not a huge victory, I'll admit. It is only a patrol vessel. But still, it does prove that the Anvil can deal with aerial threats using that broadside and keeping them on the right side. That's the Anvil. Available in the workshop now, link down below in the video description, and available as a premium vehicle on Shattered Realm. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Consider giving it a like if you did. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.